Video games have been around for quite a long time and really entered into mainstream view in the 80s. They have gone through various improvements over the years from technology upgrades for hardware to complicated designs throughout the games themselves. There have been massive jumps in technology between hardware generations. A good example of this is the jump between the Super Nintendo Entertainment System to the Nintendo 64, as well as more incremental upgrades such as the current generation. In addition, a whole other topic we could discuss is the evolution of PC gaming. But I don't want to focus on tech, hardware, or PC gaming. Instead, I'd like to focus on the games themselves. Furthermore, I want to focus specifically on one type of game. I want to make a case for why cel-shaded games are an exceptional style in the realm of video games. Before we begin, I want to make a clear statement. I am not stating that only cell shaded games should be made, nor am I stating that any other style of art direction and creation in games isn't needed. On the contrary, I fully believe that more options and diversity is better for everyone. That said, let's jump into why I believe cell shaded games are exceptional. First, you can use the majority of cell shaded games and simply boost the resolution to match the current day tech. There are plenty of examples that support this statement. Look at games like The Legend of Zelda Wind Waker HD for the Nintendo Wii U. Nintendo gave the game a few quality of life improvements and did an excellent job handling the menu and UI with the gamepad. But as far as updating the visuals, they simply increased the resolution. The game already looked like it could be a modern game. It just needed that upgrade from the original low resolution to the resolution standard at that time. Tales of Symphonia looks amazing on more modern hardware. Discussing the actual ports to modern hardware is another conversation as those seem to have been truly bungled. Playing Jet Set Radio on an Xbox 360 is still impressive to this day. In addition to the company released remasters and remakes, emulators do an excellent job of using the original game code and simply upscaling to a better resolution. Cell shaded games can appear like modern games with a simple resolution boost, and there's something remarkable how easy that transition to the modern age can be. Fellow YouTuber, Dreamcast Enjoyer, has an excellent video that discusses this, and you can check the description of this video for the URL. Now, this doesn't mean that every cell shaded game was or is excellent. There are plenty of bad examples of how to make a cell shaded game, both new and old. For instance, look at the remake of the game 13 that released in 2020. This one broke my heart. I absolutely loved the original game on GameCube. And as a side note, I have a video about this on the channel you should go check out. A simple port with a resolution boost would have done wonders. But the art team at Play Magic made everything too complicated, which caused the visuals to suffer. They just didn't look right, especially in motion. It wasn't that they were outright bad, it just didn't look right. Of course, there were plenty of other issues with the game, and feel free to look those up. But our focus today is the art direction. The team simply overcomplicated it. This leads me to the second reason why cell shaded games are fantastic. The necessary simplistic nature of the visuals in cell shaded games forces the art team to focus on character designs, environmental designs, UI, and general art direction. I want to clarify what art direction means first. I searched around and found a concise statement on what it means to a development team within the games industry. On the website, The Rookies, it is stated that art direction is the way in which we build a particular aesthetic for a purpose. I love this explanation, and they go into further detail by adding, as working on the art direction, your main objective is to immerse the players in the universe you're building and to have them identify your game among those which inspired you during the design process. In short, the game needs to draw the player in and keep their imagination in this created world. Now, this can be done with other styles of games. In fact, some of the most immersive games I've played have a more realistic style to them. Looking at you, God of War Ragnarok and The Last of Us. 
but cell shaded games force the art team to truly focus on the previously stated aspects of the game. Otherwise, it's almost certain that the game will release as a mess. Like the previous example of the 13 remake, overcomplicating the visuals, UI, and other aspects will result in things just not looking right to the eye. The cell shading style is a way to ask questions. Does the UI take up too much space on the screen? Can the player see the protagonist's facial expressions clearly? Do the movements look natural to the character design we created? Do the textures look correct with where the lighting and the level is? Does it look like the character fills an actual space in this environment we've built? These are just a few questions that the cell shading style could pose. And again, these aren't questions that aren't asked with other styles of games. It's just that the cell shading style more so forces the team to ask these questions and give answers. Many times, this results in excellent games. Again, not always. Great examples of this are some of my personal favorites, which are The Legend of Zelda Wind Waker, Time Splitters Future Perfect, 13, the Beautiful Joe games, Killer7, Tales of Symphonia, and the X-Men Legends games. Heck, in some cases, the cell shaded style even boosts a very average game. One that comes to mind is the game Auto Modelista. I absolutely loved this game on the GameCube, but when I sat and really thought about it, it wasn't an exceptional game by any measure. It was a good game, that was artificially improved by the art style and direction. This leads to my final point, and it's a bit more corporate. There is a very nice library of older games in this style. Companies could simply upscale the resolutions on many of these games via emulators, many of which the work has already been done to create, and slap a $20 price tag on it. Now, I really shouldn't be giving these companies any ideas, but my point is that there is a smaller amount of effort for a potential larger amount of return. Because these games can transition into the modern era so seamlessly and look like a modern game, this gives them a timeless feel. This is exactly what the aforementioned Dreamcast Enjoyer states in their video. These games can stand the test of time and the steady advancements of technology. To put this overly long video to rest, let me sum up why I think the cell shaded art style is superior in many ways, and it's probably my favorite style to this day. Cell shaded games are more likely to age extremely well due to the simplistic nature of the visual style and the inadvertent requirement for the art team to focus on designs and direction. I know this art style is not for everyone, nor am I saying it is objectively the best. But I do believe that the pros for this style far outweigh any cons, and that, more often than not, the games themselves are improved with this art style. Thank you for watching, and please let me know your thoughts in the comments. Whether you agree with me or hate me now because I'm so incredibly wrong, discussion is a good thing. If you enjoyed this video, remember to like and subscribe, as that tells me you want more videos like this. Thank you again, and until next time, bye.